Hi there, my name is Miss Caitlin and I am a teaching artist at the Van Wezel Performing Arts Hall. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're going to be exploring how math can be found within nature and art and how it influences artistic artworks. Here's an example of what you'll be creating today. Piet Mondrian was a Dutch artist best known for his abstract paintings. Abstract refers to the fact that the paintings do not show anything that is recognizable, such as people, objects, landscapes, or animals. Instead, abstract artists use colors, shapes, and textures to achieve their effect. So what do Piet Mondrian and his composition paintings have to do with math? I'm going to show you some pictures, and I want you to study them and think about what the pictures have in common. What about them catches your eye? Do you notice the spiral that all of the pictures have? This spiral that we see in all of the images is called the golden ratio and was discovered by an Italian mathematician many, many years ago. This fellow was named Leonardo Fibonacci. He gave us what we now call the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence refers to a set of numbers that create this spiral. It starts as a small number and it grows and grows as a sequence. So you can see it as this golden spiral, or as you see here, Fibonacci rectangles. Looking at these Fibonacci rectangles, can you see how Mondrian was influenced by the shape? Now that you can see how Mondrian was influenced by these Fibonacci rectangles, you are going to make your very own Mondrian style artwork. Before we get started, let's go over what you'll be needing. You will need any kind of blank paper, a pencil, a black marker, a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, something with a straight flat edge, and a couple of writing utensils, such as markers, colored pencils, or crayons. To create a true Mondrian style art piece, you would use the primary colors of red, blue, and yellow, as well as black. But if you don't have those exact colors, any colors will do. Now take your piece of paper and your ruler, and you're going to draw three vertical lines. Remember, vertical lines are the lines that go from the top to the bottom of the page. You're going to draw these three lines from all the way at the top to the bottom, and it doesn't matter how far apart they are spaced, as long as you have three. Now we're going to draw three horizontal lines from one side of the paper all the way to the other. Horizontal lines are from side to side, and you're going to draw them all the way across. And again, you can space them however far apart you want. Now it's the part where you get to make more of your own design choices as an artist. You could add more vertical and horizontal lines within the individual rectangles. So you might add a line here and there. You can add as many or as few lines as you would like. Once you've finished adding in your additional lines, you're going to color in whatever squares you want you can color them the blue, red, yellow primary colors that Mondrian uses. He also left quite a few rectangles white or filled them in with black. You can color in at random or create some sort of specific pattern, whatever you would like to do. We are just being influenced by the Mondrian artwork, but you don't need to make it look exactly like his. In fact, you shouldn't. It should be your own. And when you are done adding your lines and put in your color, the last step is to take your black marker or black pen or crayon and trace all the lines again to make it really pop. And there you go. You're now a true Mondrian style abstract artist. Be sure to keep your eyes open for any patterns or sequences or even the Fibonacci spiral in the world around you. And make sure to take a picture of your Mondrian artwork and post on our Facebook page. School time at the Van Wazel, hashtag artworksanywhere. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.